Big picture, small children, health, well-being and literacy. In terms of early years policy, Scotland is definitely getting it right. But not yet for every child. According to the latest review by the Scottish Survey of Literacy and Numeracy, children from disadvantaged backgrounds aren't doing well enough in reading. I believe the principles underpinning Curriculum for Excellence offer all Scottish children the best possible chance of becoming keen, fluent readers by the age of 11. But there are still problems with delivery. One of them is a serious conflict between attempts to meet the outcomes for health and well-being and those for literacy in the early years. Early years staff and teachers in P1 and P2 often feel pressurised to aim for the first level final outcomes when many children are not yet ready to achieve them. The interpretation is influenced by parental expectations, by expectations generally of school and schooling and by what's happening in the England and the USA in terms of um, very academic approach to early years, also by a professional divide between early years and upper primary educators which is affected by the hierarchical nature of the educational establishment. Basically, early years are right at the bottom of the academic pecking order. And it's also affected by Scotland's very early school starting age. Scotland is one of the earliest school starting ages in the world. Only 12% of countries send their children to school before the age of six, and they're all ex-members of the British Empire. The problems we're having with literacy standards have inspired a project called Read On, Get On, which is going to affect policy in the future. The aims of Read On, Get On are generally admirable and should help every child read well by the time they're 11, but the emphasis on communication skills in the early years is slightly worrying from a developmental point of view. Communication skills are extremely important, but so are many other aspects of children's physical, social, emotional and cognitive behaviour. In any holistic natural process, it can be dangerous to focus too narrowly on one aspect. Early years developmental psychology requires big picture thinking. We talk about the different strands of development, physical, emotional, social, cognitive, but they aren't actually separate. Until children are about six or seven, all aspects of development, including communication skills, involve all the strands. It's like a complex interweaving. If adults overfocus on one strand and try to rush it along, there may be unintended consequences in terms of others. Tugging at cognitive, for instance, would pull everything else out of sync. There's now a document to go with the Read On Get On campaign. Again, the stated aims are great and should help all children become readers. But the focus of attention is narrowed even more. Language is not the same as communication. Around 80% of all human communication is non-verbal. And things like facial expression, body language, tone of voice. In the early years, the development of children's communication skills, language and then reading, is deeply embedded in social and emotional development. The more focused the target in the early years, the more counterproductive in terms of all-round child development. Research shows that children from disadvantaged homes are already significantly disadvantaged in terms of overall development by the time they arrive at nursery school. In order to become good readers, they need several years of high-quality, play-based, early years care and education to support the all-round development on which school-based learning depends. This includes plenty of the experiences that we know help children want to learn to read and that turn them into good readers themselves, the sort of experiences lucky children take for granted. These experiences introduce children to books and reading within a context that supports all aspects of physical and mental growth. Since reading is a complex skill building on every strand of human development, it's essential to lay sound foundations before beginning formal teaching. 
sharing books with trusted caring adults helps children see reading as an emotionally satisfying experience. It takes many such opportunities to develop communication skills, language and interest in reading before formal instruction begins. But when instruction is built on emotionally sound foundations, children are much more likely to enjoy learning to read and to become keen readers themselves. In the USA, as in England, formal teaching of reading skills now begins when children are five, but there's no long-term research to support such an early start. There's little to gain. In 2013, researchers studied two groups of children in New Zealand. Group one began instruction at five and group two at seven, but by the age of 11, there was no difference in reading ability. However, group one, the five-year-olds, had developed less positive attitudes to reading and showed poorer test comprehension than the children who started later. These findings are supported by many other studies. Children who are taught skills at an early age show an initial advantage, but it disappears by the time they reach double figures. There's little, if anything, to gain from rushing children into falling formal schooling, but there's much to lose. One long-term study looked at three groups of disadvantaged preschoolers. One group went to a free play nursery, another to a developmentally appropriate kindergarten, and the third had a formal approach. That third group had many more emotional, social and behavioural problems during the rest of their school careers, and as young lad adults, they were significantly more involved in crime, more problems with relationships, more difficulties in holding down jobs, and they were less likely to vote. Another study, very long-term one, followed a large cohort of children throughout their lives and found that early school entry was associated with less educational attainment, worse midlife adjustment and increased mortality risk. The subjects of this study were high-ability, middle-class Californians. As far as we know, there are no longitudinal studies showing that an early start on formal education confers a long-term advantage to any children. Any academic advantage tends to disappear by the end of primary school. So, how long should educators concentrate on children's all-round development before formal schooling begins? International surveys of educational achievement suggest that UK children are starting school far too early. Indeed, in terms of education ranking, the countries that seem to do the best start quite late, whereas here in the UK, we start, as said before, earlier than anywhere else. Taking Finland as an example, they seem to be doing much better educationally and in terms of children's mental health. In 2004, a Finnish politician told me that 30 years ago, they decided the best way to achieve a good society was to look after our little children. That was when Finland began to develop its kindergarten system for children between three and seven. And 30 years on, it does seem they're making a better fist of getting a good society than we are in the UK. The most recent research on July the 15th this year was a 20-year study showing teacher-rated social competence at age five is the best indicator for both positive and negative outcomes in education, employment, criminal justice, substance use and mental health. On the same day, the BBC reported a survey of 1,180 UK head teachers in which 66%, two-thirds, said that pupils' mental health is now a major concern. This presentation is concentrated on big picture thinking about health, well-being and literacy in the early years. There are also many important points relating to the detail of learning to read that can't be covered here. But the main messages have to be, all young children need time, space and sensitive adult support to achieve their maximum potential at school and throughout life. Children from disadvantaged backgrounds need these things most of all.